Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really, really helps out our channel and it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So what we're going to be covering in today's video is we're going to be looking at statics and we're going to be looking at components and resultants using the rectangular method or it can also be called the triangle rule. And this will be the 15th part in our components and resultants series. So what we have going on here is this picture on the left and it is stated that a hoist trolley is subjected to three forces as shown of P, 200, and 400 pounds. Knowing that the alpha is 40 degrees over here, so this is 40 degrees, and this is 40 degrees, determine the magnitude of the P force for which the resultant of the three forces is vertical, and then the corresponding magnitude of that resultant force. All right. So let's go ahead and let's start by drawing a free body diagram. And the free body diagram is just going to be a simplistic view of what's going on here. And we are going to set up an XY coordinate system for this. So the center of my coordinate system will be the origin where all my forces act. So right here at this point is going to be my origin point since the 400, 200, and P all act on that single point. So there's going to be my x-axis, there's my y-axis. So now I'm going to throw on all my known and unknown forces. So I have P, which is acting to the right, unknown at this point, we're going to have to find it, 100% along the x-axis. And then I'm going to have this 200 pounds, which is down and to the right. And we are told that this alpha is 40 degrees here. And then we also have this 400 pounds over here, which is down and to the left and we have it 40 degrees off of the horizontal axis of X. All right, so that is my simplistic free body diagram, but we are going to add on a resultant force because we are told that the magnitude of the P force for which the resultant force of the three forces is vertical. So we have to find P such that my resultant force, which I'm just gonna label as R, is vertical. So my R can either be going down or it can be going upwards, my resultant. Now, remember, the resultant always has to be acting between all your forces. And it has to be going in the same general direction as all your forces are once they're combined. So the P is a component, the 200 is a component, and the 400 is a component. And all of these are going to combine to form this one resultant. Well, look which way they're going. Well, P is to the right. It's neither up or down. The 200 is down and to the right, and the 400 is down and to the left. So since these two forces are down, and there are no upward forces on this picture, the resultant force then has to be going in the downward direction because we are told it's strictly vertical. So we either have an option of up or down, and since the components are going downward and none of them are going upward, my resultant force has to be going in the downward direction, like that. So that would be my completed free body diagram. So now I really don't need this picture anymore. I can just use my simplistic drawing here, which sometimes the free body diagram is not really as more simplistic as the original drawing. Sometimes you can work off the original drawing. All righty. So how do we find P? Because that's our first portion here. We are looking for whatever P is. Well, the resultant force is always going to be this. It is always going to be the square root of your Y components all summed together then squared, plus the summation of all your X components squared, and then square rooted. Well, <clears throat> This means that we are going to have portions in the y direction for each component and portions in the x direction for each component. Well, if the resultant has to be 100% vertical, that means that this portion cannot exist. It has to be zero for this resultant to be 100% in the y direction. So what this means is that the summation of each x component needs to be zero for this resultant to be 100% vertical. So that makes our life a little bit easier because we're only dealing with 400, 200, and then P, and the resultant force completely disappears from our equation, and we're left with only a single unknown of P. 
So let's do this. So let's sum forces in the x direction and we'll take to the right as positive. Well, first we have to determine a few components here. P will be 100% in the X. Don't worry about that. The 400 and 200 are go at angles, so they're going to have a portion that is in the X and in the Y. So let's work with the 200 first here. So the 200 is going down and to the right. So it is going to have components to the right and then component downward in the vertical direction. Well, <clears throat> what about the 400? Well, the 400 is going down and to the left, so it will have a component that is downward and then to the left. So if we're summing forces in the x direction for each of these little components, and we're taking to the right as positive, the 200 will be positive, p will be positive, the 400 will be negative. All righty, so let's start with this. So we're gonna have our 200 pounds, and then we have to turn it into its own individual component, because it is a component itself, and then we have to turn it into its own x component. So in order to do this, we have to use the angle over here, 40 degrees. And if you may recall, it may look something like this, where this is the 200, this is the X component of the 200, this is the Y component of the 200, and it forms a little triangle where this angle, oh, sorry, let's uh, redraw it a little bit better here so that it's actually at the correct angle. So we have our 200 right here, our Y over here, and then our X over here. And the reason why I redrew it is because this 40 degrees is off of the Y, not the X. The original triangle would be if the angle was off of the X axis, but since it's off the Y axis, I'm gonna leave the Y in position here. So you would just have to fill in this triangle using um, cosine and sine because it forms a right triangle here with the hypotenuse being the 200. So if I want my X, uh, dimension here, I would have cosine of 40 is equal to my opposite, or my, sorry, it would be sine of 40 is equal to my opposite over the 200. So what is x equal to? Well, that's just going to be 200 sine of 40. And then you just repeat that process for the 400 in the x direction. But now since the angle is off of the x, that is going to be cosine instead of sine. So this would be cosine of 40 here. The minus sign because it's pointed to the left and I'm saying to the right is positive. And if you wanted to, you could redraw this little triangle over here if you really wanted to, because we would have our X here, our 400 like this, and then our Y like that, and that's my angle of 40. And as you can see, the X side is adjacent to the 40 there. And don't forget you have plus P, which is going to the right, and all of that has to be equal to zero. So P is my only unknown in there. So you just rearrange and solve for P and you end up with 177.86 pounds and it is going to the right. So there's our answer for the first part, which is what is the P force? Well, it's 177.86 pounds. Well, the second part says, determine the corresponding magnitude of our resultant force R. Well, we have to determine what R is. Well, R is this equation right here. Well, we know that f of x is equal to zero. So the square root and the square disappear. So basically R will be the summation of our Fy. So what we can do is just sum forces in the y direction for our part B here. And we'll take up as positive everything. Well, you know, since everything's in the downward direction, let's just take downward as positive. And basically, this summation will equal my resultant force. All right. So we only really have the 400 200 to worry about because P is 100% in the X, does not have anything in the Y. So we have these two components of our 200 and 400 to worry about. And you would find those exactly the same way as you found the X, just work with cosine and sine once again. So let's start with our 200 pounds. So we have our 200 pounds. It's going downward, so it'd be positive based upon my sine convention. And this time it would be the cosine of 40 because the 40 is adjacent to the y and cosine is the adjacent trig function. And then plus 400 pounds. And this time this one would be sine of 40 degrees <clears throat> because the 40 degrees is off of the x, the y would be your opposite side. And all of that would have to be equal to r. 
Well, this just means that R is just the total of that, which is 410.3 pounds in that downward direction. And that would be your resultant force there. <clears throat> and that's how you would solve that overall problem. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problem solve this variety, please check out the other videos on our channel as this is the 15th part in this series. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below and subscribe to the channel because all of that does help us over here. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.